Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. EA turned up the content yesterday with crazy SBCs, one of which it seems like everybody is doing because SBC fodder is going up and prices that link to that card of other players are going up as well. But it's definitely not the cheapest content. With everyone doing these SBCs, fodder is going crazy, guys, and there's more SBCs coming. Will it ever come down so we can buy more because of the SBCs that are coming? We'll talk about that in today's video and look forward to today's content on Saturday. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's start with the objective content. Start from the bottom and work our way up. Objective Callum Wilson, we talked about it in yesterday's video, would maybe have some market impact, and I think it actually has. It's not a bad card. It's also not an amazing card. The best part about it is it's pretty easy to do. I think seven games, is that all that it is? Yes, win seven matches with three Premier League players minimum in your starting 11. I've played a couple games of champs and already got working on this card. It is three-star, three-star, which is not the best, but he does have the finesse, power header, and first touch play styles. Not play style plus, but just play styles. So not a bad free card. Other Premier League strikers like Ali Watkins that we mentioned in yesterday's video are actually dropping on the market and I think it's largely due to that card yesterday. Now before we go into the SBCs which were the biggest part of yesterday's content let's take a look at the players that are in packs right the insane team Jude, Salah, Griezmann, Hansen, an insane set of players in packs. I mean guys we've got four cards that are right around that 1 million coin mark or above with Griezmann also 700k and Kunde at 500,000 coins. It is a nice team of players. It feels like if you pack one of these, you're hitting something that's worth some coins. And that's nice, right? Because especially as the market keeps crashing and these gold cards keep just dying in value, it doesn't seem like packing something cool gets you a lot of coins. But when a promo drops like this and the prices are pretty inflated or pretty high for a lot of the cards, that does kind of feel nice. Now, I will say the pack weight for a lot of these is pretty low except for like the guys on the bottom line here acosta herrera garassi and wagner and carolyn as well these cards are pretty easy to pack and i think they actually bring up if you take a look at the store i think they bring up the pack odds a decent amount but it is a really really nice team that is in packs and a lot of people are opening packs yesterday of course a ton of people were ripping the store packs saved up packs as well and we had the first ever 100k packs of fc24 4.1 percent chance of a Trailblazers player in this pack. I'm going to open this Prime Gold Players pack from Objectives really quick. I opened all my packs yesterday. I didn't get anything super good as we're again here just getting an 83 rated card. And it seemed like the pack weight yesterday was just okay. It wasn't that amazing, which is a little bit disappointing. But also, that's kind of what we expected, right? And also, the way that we were expecting the market to move was based off of that pack weight as well. And it kind of did end up happening. So, nothing huge pack for me yesterday. But it was more about getting fodder for SBCs, and we'll talk more about fodder in just a second. But let's talk about those SBCs that absolutely took the content yesterday from good to kind of crazy. Guys, we had the best SBC of the entire year dropped yesterday, and it's this fella right here, Rod Rigo. Guys, this SBC is taking over this game right now, not just because it's a really solid upgrade and he got a playstyle plus, I think it's just we have fodder. A lot of people open those packs from preseason rewards, two weekend leagues in now, and just packs saved up from rivals and stuff like that. People now have enough fodder to accumulate to be able to finish an SBC of this price. Coming in right now at kind of a price that's really inflated, guys. 420,000 coins for Rodrigo. When he was first dropped yesterday, he was only 350k. Fodder has gone up so much even after the content drop that this SBC has gotten a lot more expensive, but it's not that bad to do because it's only four squads, 84, 86, 87, and an 88. At the very least, I think this is an SBC you could chip away at over time because it's only four squads. And guys, I'll say it, I think a lot of people look at the first touch playstyle plus, and they're like, is that really a good playstyle to have? When I've watched some of the player reviews and some people actually use this card already, I think it's one of those playstyles that's going to fly under the radar. That when you actually feel how he plays in game, you're going to really notice that difference, right? Read the description. Has a minimal error when trapping the ball and is able to transition to dribbling much faster with greater control. And that fits his dribbling stats perfectly and his pace stats as well, along with the explosive accelerate type. I can imagine this card is very, very good in game and his dribbling is going to be absolutely insane. Some people don't like his shooting. 80 shot power seems maybe a little bit low. Of course, strength and aggression pretty low as well. 
But guys, that, especially being able to play striker and on the right side and left wing as well, an absolutely insane, insane SBC that a lot of people were able to do yesterday. But again, it's not super cheap, but 350, 400,000 coins is definitely craftable over a couple weeks of rewards, maybe a couple upgrade packs here or there, and objective packs that are still to be given out. And of course, guys, with all the hype of that SBC being released, we have Madrid links that are absolutely flying. The most popular of which definitely is the Modric Road to the Knockouts. Guys, this card, Modric RTTK, was 220,000 coins. And I believe right now he's approaching 260 to 270. Even with all the supply that this card had, so crazy uh, of a pack weight for Modric this last week, his card price is absolutely flying. flying. Jude Bellingham's Team of the uh, Week card is flying up in price as well. He was basically... 300,000 coins yesterday before the content drop. He is now 350k. I also flipped a Valverde who went up a crazy amount after content because of all the Madrid links. Even gold cards like Rudiger and Eder Militao are exploding in price as a lot of the market is exploding in price after yesterday's pack spam because of those links to that SBC. So we'll talk more about the market and how prices are moving in just a minute. But two other major SBCs yesterday, the Rafael Leal Player of the Month and Hyun Min Sun. Guys, I'm definitely going to be locked into the Hyun Min Sun. What a card. Of course, being a Spurs fan, I have to get that one done. I like the upgrades that EA gave these. They're not massive upgrades, but they're good enough. And guys, I'm going to say it this way. Hyun Min Sun looks expensive for being, what is he now? As fodder has gone up, 813,000 coins. This was like 700k at the content drop yesterday. Fodder is just absolutely flying. Um, if this card was on the market, I mean, I would believe that he would probably be around 700 to 800k. So I think this is a fairly valued SBC. And I like the five-star weak foot. I like the four-star skills, all the positions that he can play. I don't think it's a terrible value SBC. It is just, I mean, 700, 800k, it is expensive. And I like that it's only six squads, but it does require a lot of high rateds, and that's where the market is moving the most. Now, for my, in my opinion as well, Rafael Leal, I think he's overpriced. Again, it is an expensive SBC once again. For the upgrade that he got, I mean, he's 512k compared to his gold card. You know, Sun already has two upgrades over his gold. Leal, this is just his first. I personally think is overpriced. I think if this card was on the market, it would maybe not be 512k. That's just my opinion. So I think Leal is a little overpriced and Sun is a bit of decent value compared to him. But it kind of comes down to just what you prefer. If you prefer one or the other, then go for it. Get it done. You got time to craft either of these. They're both out for 30 days. And that is very nice. Now, really quickly, I got to point it out as well. Two other SBCs yesterday that we're going to talk about. The Team of the Week upgrade, which was very nice. I had duplicates 83, 84 rated. All that you needed was 185 and the rest of an 83 rated squad to complete the Team League upgrade two different times you could complete it. Is it two times per day that we can do this thing? It is. You can see right now it's going to refresh in 12 hours, which will be the content drop time. Two times per day. That's also going to keep Team of the Week prices in check for at least the next week or so in this game. EA is giving us the opportunity to open this, which is actually really dope. I like that. And it's also a place where we can put 82, 83, 84 rated fodder because I have loads of that. I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well. So we can go in there. And the Trailblazers Challenge 1. Guys, we've been asking for challenge SBCs like this for tradable packs. They finally dropped one. It's not a massive pack, but watch out for more of these. N not only because it's Trailblazers Challenge 1 and you expect more to come out, but with SBC fodder prices flying as much as they have, EA has to control the fodder market somehow. And I think those are going to be, those SBCs are going to be part of the way that they try to do it. Now, let's talk about the market because fodder is probably the number one place on the markets being talked about right now. These prices have just absolutely exploded man and it's not even just before content yesterday yes before content 89s were 24,000 coins they went up with the Hyunmin Sun and Rafael Leal SBCs they went back down heading into content as people were worried about supply but then we had an absolutely crazy Rodrigo and all the SBCs that were still out after or before that the Sun and the Leal really I think it's Sun and Rodrigo that are causing this but look at Casemiro from 25k all the way now up to 35,000 coins. Guys, these cards are exploding. And part of the reason that they keep going up as well is, number one, people don't have these cards in their clubs. They're not packing 89s and 90s that often. They have to go and buy them to complete the SBCs. 
And number two, we have the promise of more great SBCs to come. Guys, we have leaks of a Laurent Blanc Icon SBC. We still have a Declan Rice SBC upcoming. The Hero uh, SBC pack for a Hero 87 max rated, that's still out there, right? That is why fodder keeps rising because I think a lot of people aren't selling it as investors right now. They're still holding because it has so much promise to actually continue to go up because there's just a lot more demand on the horizon than supply. So fodder is going up like crazy on the high tier. On the lower tier, 84 is still discard. 85s were just under 4K a minute ago. They're right around the 4,000 coin range, which really, if you take a look at their graphs, they didn't even move that much. It was that higher tier fodder because that's what everybody needs, right? When you're doing those high rated 87, 88 rated squads, you need to buy those types of players to get it done. I mean, personally, working on the Hyunmin Sun SBC, I'm short a couple of basically 88 and 89 rated cards of getting this SBC done. That's the type of fodder that I need to be able to finish this. And I'm going to have to spend some coins to go out and do that. But honestly, it just looks like it's going to keep going up. Now, we'll talk a little bit more in a second of how maybe EA could drop fodder prices over the weekend and into the week if they wanted to or if they just want to keep draining coins off the market. But guys, speaking of the market and prices, the market has life. The market has like it seems healthy, man. You know, last week we were talking about how prices just dropped and dropped and dropped. Well, yesterday it actually went down like we said it was going to. We had a lot of supply right around the content drop. The best time to buy some players for your team was in that first 30 minutes to an hour after the content drop. If we take a look at Erling Holland as an example, he's 240,000 coins right now. During that content hour, he went, well, he started out at about 280, was panic sold until content. He went down in that first hour of content down to 220. And then there was a massive rise back on the market, even with all of the SBCs like Rodrigo, Sun, and Leao taking coins off the market as people were buying fodder cards to turn into those SBCs. You had so many coins from weekend leagues, from packs that were opened yesterday, right? Whenever there's a promo where there's a lot of saved packs, which is exactly what happened yesterday, whether it's rivals rewards, people still take tradable marquee matchups, maybe even some like foot champs rewards from like last week. That might have been not too many people saving packs for that long, but you know, 100K packs in the store. So many coins are put into people's accounts from opening those packs, selling players, the quick sell value of those players as well. And you often see big rebounds after that. That is what we talked about in yesterday's video. And that is the exact thing that happened. Holland went from 227 up to 259. Another card that I watched yesterday with all of the hype and the movement on the market as well was Rashford. Rashford went from 190 down to 158, back up to 180,000 coins, which is a little bit lower than he is right now. He's 173. But that was how the market moved yesterday on a lot of your gold meta cards. So if you bought during that dip, that was a great time. And even if you're waking up today and you're like, Nate, you see that Rashford, he was down just a little bit from where he was, or Holland was 240 and he was 260. Guys, I think that some of these prices are have gotten just a little bit lower um, into the early Saturday hours. And I think they will rise into the day today. The market seems very healthy. People have coins. They are buying cards for teams, playing the weekend league playing foot champs and it's actually a great place to be on the market right now and to be trading that's why i'm actually like broke at the moment road to the knockouts went up very well as well i picked up two Lewandowski's with the la liga hype of everybody wanting to use the brand new rodrigo i was like you know what this is a card that might do pretty well and a lot of your road to the knockouts are doing well um of course modric with the insane rise You've got Dembele that's rising now. Joao Pedro, I picked up one of him at 240. He's now 267. So you're starting to see a lot of these road to the knockouts continue to go up in price as well. Klaus finally got a price range update. Guys, I think this is a card you want to buy one of. Stick it in your club. 17K is the perfect price, but he's quickly rising as a lot of people are investing in this. So if you can get one around 17K, I think that's a good value um, investment. I picked up a couple of those. You can see them here on my transfer list. I was able to snipe them for like 16K, um, 16K flat yesterday during the content. But that's a card, same thing with the Awars and the Gutses that I plan to sit on my transfer list for honestly a couple weeks and hopefully they can continue to rise. You know, maybe a Bundesliga card comes out that Gutsa links to, he gets his upgrades and then boom, he goes to like 30K or something and then coins just doubled in two or three weeks. That's the hope for a card like this related to the market now for the rest of the market yesterday for some of these like um the trailblazers cards i know a lot of you guys probably want to try some of them out of them out with the play styles that were added to them 
These guys were fluctuating like crazy. I picked up a Kunde at 500,000 coins, sold it at 570. I would expect to see a few of these cards rise up into the day today on Saturday, as we normally do see on Saturdays. But also what I would expect to see for them is a drop between like maybe three, four hours before content and then right leading up into the content drop. This happens almost every single Saturday. We talk about it a lot is the new promo cards rise up as people wake up to play champs and then they get panic sold into content most weeks as people are afraid of new store packs and new supply coming. Weekend League rewards are going to be opened up all day today too, supplying these cards a little bit. I literally just watched one of my buddies pack Hansen from player picks and rewards like it's tough to pack these cards, so that's an insane pull. But there's going to be people that will hit them today, tradable and untradable from rewards. And I do think that it will drop their prices down. But I think you first might see a bit of a rise. Griezmann was 700k. He's already starting to go up. Uh, Di Lorenzo. Ruben Diaz, actually. I know 65 pace does not look good for Ruben Diaz, but he's got the Anticipate Plus playstyle. I can't imagine that he's just that bad in game. I almost... Wouldn't be mad to try out that card just to see how he feels compared to somebody like Varan with a lot less pace, but insane defensive stats. So might suit your team there. But again, one gem I'll point out as well from this team is Mkhitaryan. I think Mkhitaryan for the value is a nuts freaking card. He's got the same playstyle plus now that KDB has. The incisive pass. He still has finesse shot flair and Trivella. And um, 75,000 coins for a plus two i mean plus six defending plus three passing and then one everywhere else over his inform card uh but that i don't know i don't i just think that's going to be like a 50k card by the end of the weekend and that's going to be a really really good value syria center attacking mid or center mid and, and maybe even cdm if you want to test out that 67 defense so i think that's one of the best budget cards from the promo now let's look ahead a little bit into today on saturday because we talked about the market a little bit in relation today but let's talk about the content and SBCs we could expect. We already headlined some big SBCs that could be coming in terms of the players like Blanc. I really don't think Blanc is today, guys. I'd be surprised. Last week on Sunday is when we got the Beckham. So maybe they do Blanc today and then maybe like the Hero Pack comes tomorrow on Sunday or maybe it's flipped and vice versa. But I would expect to see Blanc here pretty soon. And that could really hurt some other center back prices on the market depending on how much this Blanc is priced. Because Blanc, he's always one of those icons that is really good. And a lot of people would look forward to this SBC saying, I could go ahead and get myself a Playstyle Plus with Anticipate on Blanc. He's got Jockey, Bruiser, and Aerial as well. He's got all the great defensive uh, playstyles. 78 pace, 90 defense, and 85 physical. He's only a 400,000 coin card. So if you think about the price of the SBC, it should be around 400k as well, but I have bad news. Since fodder is so expensive, EA definitely prices these SBCs like multiple days before they drop them. We've seen this in previous installments of FIFA. I would not be surprised if the Blanc SBC is more than his card is actually on the market right now. And I don't think his card is really down that much after the leak. He got leaked and went from like 430 down to 420k and 407 where he is now. If he gets panic sold today and you see the SBC come out and it's very expensive or at least like more than 50 to 60k above what the card price is on the market his card price might rebound a little bit but that could be an sbc that comes out soon but just watch out for that kind of fluctuation there in his price i really think the best chance for a player sbc today would be declan rice player sbcs are like so common on saturdays um like every brand new promo we get a player sbc on friday on saturday and sunday most times I think he could be coming today. So watch out for like even my team. Like this technically would fit into my team as I've got some Prem links in my squad. Hopefully he's got a decent pace boost. I don't know how much they're going to juice up his pace, maybe his defense. But this one would hopefully be an SBC that would be a, li a little bit more affordable as well. Declan Rice has got 71 pace. So, you know, 77 pace would be super nice. And he'd probably be like 87, 88 rated. Two-star, three-star is not the best, but he could be a nice prem defensive midfielder if they boost up the card in the right positions. And again, it could be an actual, a cheaper SBC that maybe makes some of your lower tier fodder move. Is there an opportunity through this weekend to invest in the fodder parts of the market that have not moved yet? And to my, to answer that question, I think I would say yes. I think I would say yes, especially as I look at 80, 86s. They were down at 7.5K yesterday during the content. That was probably their lowest point. If you can get 86s under 
8,000 coins or right around 8K. That's probably the fodder investment that I would be looking into right now. Maybe 85s under 4,000 coins as well. If you're going to buy anything, we still have a lot of SBCs that drop coming. And especially I'm thinking about that hero pack. I feel like that one might be one where maybe EA does an 85 rated squad for the hero pack, but they require like an 87 on top of it. So 87s could still go higher as well. You see the gap here between 87s and 88s. 7,000, 8,000 coins between those two. I think they could go up higher if the 88s start going up higher as well. So watch for 85s, 86s, and 87s. If you want to make a speculative fodder play, this is usually the time of the week where fodder is pretty low, but it's just not on the higher tier right now because of all the SBCs that we have. So that's kind of a little bit of a risky play because fodder is already up, but with so many SBCs upcoming, it doesn't look like a bad investment in my opinion, especially for somebody like me, I need some 86s to get the Hyunmin Sun SBC working. So I'm going to look into that. Now, also for today's Saturday content, watch out for more of these tradable packs. Now, it's not going to impact the fodder market that much. Maybe it will take a slight hit if we don't have that much good content and they drop a pack here in the store. But a gold players pack, it would have to be like a pack, maybe like a 25k pack or better. Uh, this is not a 25k, I think it's like a 12.5k pack is what this is. But if they drop a 25k pack or better, that could make fodder prices dip just a little bit and out, honestly create an opportunity to get in and to buy a few of those cards before they would go up further. But guys, the game right now just feels rejuvenated a little bit. And I think it's really because of this Rodrigo. I know it's expensive and some of you guys may be like, Nate, I, I can't get that done right now. But I think EA have given us enough time, two weeks, to get it done via crafting, through all the reward sets. And uh, I'm excited to see how we go throughout the rest of this weekend. We'll have a mini release coming, should be tomorrow. And um, yeah, EA, this content started out nice yesterday. The players in packs make us want to open packs and grind for the rewards through v Weekend League because if you hit somebody big, it feels like you're getting somebody good. And then the SPC content, again, great players, big name players in here as well with good upgrades and the playstyle pluses are really dope. Last thing, oh, I forgot to point this out. Guys, watch out for evolutions on the EA website. They mentioned that a number of evolution slots will be released during the two-week campaign, allowing you to celebrate players who have stood out for your club in Ultimate Team. Like we mentioned, this promo is all about players who have been performing well in real life, and some of the, the playstyle pluses actually relate to how they've been playing well. It's kind of a cool read-up here on EA's website. But this almost makes it sound like prior Evo cards that we've already been like evolved in our Ultimate Teams will have a potential to be furtherly evolved, right? Celebrate players who have stood out for your club since the kickoff of FC24. So that brings some hype in my mind to evolutions again this week because they said that multiple different iterations, a number of evolution slots will be unlocked. So I haven't started on Pacey Winger or the Bruiser Wingback at all, and they expire in 11 days. But it sounds like we have to be watching the evolution section of content for some more new stuff upcoming as well but that's going to be the video for today guys if you did enjoy it drop a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and of course subscribe if you're new i will see you guys in a video tomorrow it's been nathan peace